Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lita Gersa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am all about the beautiful Winter Meadow Suite from the Stampin' Up! September, December mini catalog. Now, today I am fighting a little bit of a cold bug. I started with a bit of a sore throat last night, and now I've got the stuffy nose thing going on. Um, so I apologize. My voice sounds a little off, and I do any sniffling. I've got a box of Kleenex right here, so hopefully I won't be sniffling and snuffling through this video. Um, but I did want to be able to jump on live because I missed you last week. Last week I was dealing with the fallout from my flu and COVID shots. So um, I didn't want to miss another week, so here I am harsh or raspy voice and stuffy nose and all. So uh, thank you for joining me today. Welcome. I'm just going to ask you to give me a hello once you're here joining me so I know you're watching and uh, then we'll get ready to go. Let's see who's here. Hi, Sonia. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate that. Hi, Jeanette. Hi, Laura. Welcome. Hi, Colleen. How are you? I hope you are well. Um, all right. So as I was saying, we are all about the um, this beautiful suite of products that is in the mini catalog. Soon to be um, retiring mini catalog. We only have another uh, few weeks left with this catalog. And of course, now that the last chance promotion has started, um, all of the retiring products are available only while supplies last. So some of the products in the suite have already sold out. There's a beautiful specialty paper that is no longer available. But the best news is that the beautiful DSP is actually carrying over to next year's holiday catalog. So I'm super excited about that. But I am going to show you the products that are in the suite that are still available. And then I'm going to show you three cards today. I'm going to make them with you. And then I've got a whole bunch more ideas to share because, well, this is just such a gorgeous suite. So let's see. We've had a few more. Come on in. Hi, Julie. How are you? Hi, Jean. I missed you all last week too, but I was down and out, not feeling so good at all. Um, this week, I'm, as I said, a little croaky from a little bit of a cold bug that I picked up. But other than that, I'm doing all right. Hi, Susan from Pickering. Hi, Donna from New Hamburg. We're almost neighbors. All right. I am going to switch to my desk view and we are going to get started here. So here we go. Um, here is the suite, at least the products that are still available from the suite. So, of course, to start, we have this beautiful bundle. Now, even though the gorgeous DSP is carrying over to next year's catalog, the bundle is not the coordinating bundle. So if you have not yet picked up this bundle, you may want to have another look at it. It is absolutely beautiful. So, of course, we have some lovely um, stamped images. They're very soft watercolor look. I'm going to give you some tips for stamping these images and getting a really nice soft look um, when you are inking your stamp. And then some lovely mixed font sentiments up here that are good for not just for the holidays. In fact, there's not a Merry Christmas in sight. We have winter wishes, uh, colder weather brings us together. So not necessarily Christmas specific, which I love because we can use this well past the holiday season um, or to send greetings to those who maybe don't celebrate Christmas. So um, I love the versatility of this stamp set. And then, of course, we have the dies. We have this is almost like a two in one uh, die set. So we have the dies that are on the, the right side here that are all open dies that coordinate with the stamped images. But then this side, the left side, is all additional dies to cut various greenery and sprigs. And this one is really cool. It cuts a, a, a peek through um, pattern that you'll see on the last project I'm going to show you today. Okay, so really great die set. Um, and of course, the bundle is only available while supplies last now that the last chance um, list has posted. Okay, all right, so we're going to set that aside. And then I'm going to talk about the embellishments first. So we have this gorgeous ribbon that I do believe is carrying over this beautiful white and silver sheer ribbon. It ties like a dream. Uh, it makes very, very pretty bows and allows you to tie a nice tight knot. So you get a really um, pretty bow. Let me just pull that nice and tight. You see that? See how nice and tight that knot is? Really, really easy to make bows with this ribbon. And then, of course, we have these fabulous embellishments. Now, these ones I don't believe are carrying over. These are the faceted gems. And they're actually three colors. I'm going to open this for a minute so that you can see all the colors in this pack. 
Um, there's sort of a bluey gray. There's like a silver, and then there's this sort of lost lagoon. So there's actually three tones in the gems in this um, pack. So those ones are super pretty as well. They were not orderable for quite some time, but they are back in stock. Um, so if you haven't picked those up yet, and you do have the other products in this suite, now is the time to do that. I'm just popping this back in. Uh, we'll leave it. I'll do it later. Um, and then, of course, we have the beautiful, beautiful designer series paper. So the one side is a beautiful sort of greenery and scenery in a watercolor look. And then the reverse side is uh, various shades of watercolor washes. So let me just show you, look at this beautiful. So each um, section here has a stag. So we've got a forest and a deer. Um, so you can get six card fronts out of this 12 by 12 sheet. This pattern is absolutely gorgeous, whether it's to frame for a decor piece um, or to cut up and use uh, smaller pieces or even for a scrapbook page, just a beautiful uh, watercolor piece. And then we have some scenery. We have these gorgeous, I think these are road, rose hips. I call them berries in the, um, in the measurements, but I think these are actually rose hips. I'm not entirely sure, but that's what they look like to me. And then we have some more trees. And then this beautiful greenery with the blue berries. So, of course, once we flip this over, we have all of our washes. So we've got a blueberry bushel wash, which looks like water to me. We have this sort of frosted look in the uh, Lost Lagoon. There's a pretty peacock wash. There is a smoky slate wash. There is a misty moonlight, and then of course our gray granite. So just beautiful sort of um, more neutral patterns to use on just about any project. All right, so that is the gorgeous DSP. And again, it is carrying over to next year's mini. However, I should mention uh, that to the best of my knowledge, once this catalog retires, this paper is going to go into hibernation so to speak, until the next holiday mini um, comes out next year. Okay, so if you need to have this for projects this winter, um, I would suggest picking up a pack before it goes off into the sunset until next year. Okay, all right, so I see a bunch more people have joined us. I'm just going to quickly acknowledge some more of our guests who have come on in. Hi, Louise. Yes, you found me. Hi, Maya from the Netherlands. Hi, Giselle, Nelda from Venice, Florida. It's cold in Venice. Oh, you should come on up here, Nelda. <laughs> Uh, you are cold. It is rather chilly. We had snow pretty much off and on all day today here. Uh, hi, Cynthia and Jill and Kathy and Elsie. Hi, Laura. All right. It is cold here too, Laura. Yes, Ohio and Ontario are on just about the same latitude. So we're experiencing very similar weather. All right. I'm just going to get to the bottom of the comments here so I can see everybody. All right. Our first card um is this one oh you're not getting my alert stub that's bizarre i don't know what's going on facebook changes the rules every other week it feels like all right so this card actually doesn't use the dsp it uses some of that gorgeous all about autumn designer series paper and i just love the look of copper and pretty peacock together so i wanted to kind of use that as the focus of my color palette for this card and i wanted to, sh to show you how to use this sort of um, scenic image here from the stamp set. When I first saw that, I was like, oh, I'm not sure what to do with that. Well, the best thing is that Stampin' Up! gave us a die to cut it out. So that's number one. Um, really great that we can cut that out. So let's get to it. I will show you how we're going to put this card together. So I'm starting with a piece of Lost Lagoon cardstock. It is four by five and a quarter inches, and I've embossed it using the Snowflake Sky embossing folder. Okay. And then I have a two by five and a quarter inch strip. This is the pumpkin pattern, one of my favorite uh, fall patterns from that pack. And uh, but the reverse side has this beautiful sort of distressed um, copper foil. So we're going to go ahead and glue that down. And I'm going to do my best not to lose my voice <laughs> as I'm doing this today. I've done a lot of talking at school today, so I am quite hoarse and raspy. Let me just make sure this is on straight so that I put my paper on straight. There we go. So we'll get that centered. Okay, and then that is going to get glued onto a pretty peacock card base that is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. So we're just going to go ahead and fold one in half. And then we're going to glue our 
emboss panel onto our card base. So when I'm gluing embossed panels, I often will use my liquid glue uh, for a couple of reasons. One, the liquid glue kind of gets into all the little nooks and crannies of the embossed pattern, but also because sometimes in my haste, I sometimes pull my cardstock apart when I use my stamp and seal. So by using the liquid glue, um, I'm kind of making sure my, my card ends up looking a little bit better here. Just going, oh, no, I don't want to do that. We're going to hide that. Sorry. Uh, sorry about that, Deb. Didn't mean to highlight your comment there. Yes, Facebook and Pinterest are doing interesting things these days. All right. Now, to sort of create my backdrop for my scene here, um, I have a pretty peacock circle that I've cut using the stylus shape size. And then I have a deckled circle that I've cut from some of the um, oxidized copper specialty paper. Now this is currently out of stock, but it is coming back. It is due this week, actually. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and layer those. Now this circle is about two and a half inches in diameter. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and layer those. just like that and we're just gonna see ever so slightly a border can you see we just get a little hint of that peacock in behind um so that is going to go on our card just like this we're just going to glue that flat onto the front of our card and that's going to kind of create our backdrop for our focal point here so we'll stick that guy down all right, now let me talk to you about how to get a nice stamped image with these stamps, because these are um, the distinctive stamps, which I'm just gonna grab the stamp here for a sec. They have texturing in the stamp. I'm not sure how well this shows in the camera, but can you see there, I'll move my, my light a little closer. Can you see the fine texture that is in that stamp? And that's what gives us that sort of soft watercolor effect when we stamp. However, um, it can be a little bit tricky to get a nice, clean, soft image. So let me show you the difference when I stamp just by inking the stamp up like I normally would. So I'm going to take my Lost Lagoon ink. I'm going to ink up my stamp and I'm going to stamp it on this little scrap piece of paper here. Okay, so does this look the same as this? Not quite. See how this is kind of blotchy? It's not nearly as nice. So to get that soft look, I'm actually gonna stamp off here, make sure I get rid of most of that ink. And then I'm gonna take my sponge dauber and I'm going to ink my stamp with the dauber. So I'm just kind of pouncing onto the stamp. I'm not like smooshing or swirling like you would if you were blending ink. I'm just kind of tapping the ink onto the dauber. And then when I stamp it this time, look at the difference. Isn't that, that top one so much prettier? I really love that soft look, but I don't love what I get when I ink my stamp the traditional way. Okay, so um, you'll want to make sure that you, oh, the gems are on the carryover list. That is good news. Thank you, Susan. I had missed that. Uh, I knew the ribbon and the DSP were, but I was not aware that the gems are. So that is awesome. Uh, oh, Susan, you mailed out a package. That is awesome. Um, all right. So this is the sponge look. This is the, the just regular standard inked look. So I like this look better. So I already have one that I've die cut here. Now you'll notice on my sample that I've got a little bit of a dark border. So when you die cut, you do get a little bit of a white border on it. And I didn't really like that look. So we're going to fix that up with a little bit of pretty peacocking. So I'm just going to take my dauber once again, and I'm going to kind of flip downwards at enough of an angle that I'm kind of filling in. Just see how I'm filling in that white border? And so that's going to do two things. It's going to hide that white. I don't, don't like that white border around my image. Uh, but it's also going to give me a nice dark frame around my image and make it stand out on the front of my card. So I'm just gonna come all the way around. And the other thing that this does is it hides any, you know how sometimes your, your die moves when you're die cutting and you don't get an even border all the way around? Well, this has solved that problem. Okay, so there we go. There is our nicely framed image. All right, so Susan, you don't like white borders either. So that's, that's the trick. Use a little bit of ink and a dauber and you can fill in your white borders. All right, so I have here a bunch of die cuts. So these are cut using this sort of pine branch die. Let me just grab the die set to show you which, oh, 
of course it fell off as I was pulling it over here. This one here, it's a little bit warped because I've used it a lot this winter or this season, I should say. Um, so it's this die here and it cuts this sort of pine branch look. So again, I cut um, two from Pretty Peacock cardstock and two from more of that um, oxidized copper specialty paper. So we are simply going to layer these behind our die cut. Okay, so they're kind of peeking out behind it. So the easiest way I have found is to just kind of take these and layer them. And they're going to kind of go like this, right? But first, we're going to do our pretty peacock one. So we want them to be sort of at the forefront. So I'm just going to kind of layer them like this. Okay, keeping in mind, my card is only so wide. So I want to make sure that those are not going to extend past the edges of my card, which will mean I won't be able to get it into an envelope. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of seal to the back. And I'm just going to press that onto my branches. And then I have them adhered. Easy peasy, right? And then I'm going to do the same thing. Apply a little bit more seal right over top of those branches. I'm going to move these guys a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. And they, I'm going to offset a little bit. So I'm going to rotate just a bit because I don't want them to line up perfectly, right? I want them to offset a bit. There we go. How easy was that? Right? Super, super easy. All right, so that now is going to get popped up onto our circle here. So I'm going to use up this last couple of dimensionals on this sheet. I will save the frame to use later. Do not throw out your dimensional frame. Those are perfectly good dimensionals. So you can take your snips and trim off little bits and use them all. So we're going to put that up towards the top part of the circle because we're going to add our sentiment here. So speaking of the sentiment, here we go. I've already stamped and heat embossed it in copper. Uh, so this is the Winter Wishes sentiment from the stamp set. And I've die cut it using the label die from the All About Autumn, or sorry, the Autumn Leaves dies. It's from the All About Autumn Suite. So I was kind of marrying two suites here uh, with the All About Autumn and um, the Winter Meadow. And um, so I love the way this fits in, in this um, particular tag. So we are going to go ahead and just layer that. Almost, it almost looks like a little bit of a snow globe scene. So I'm going to add my dimensionals. Now I'm going to put them towards the bottom here because this is the top part of the tag is going to overlap my little scene here. In fact, I might just add a little smidge of liquid glue there along the top where it overlaps so it stays nice and secure. So we're going to pop that on right about there. Okay. And then we have a little bit of the in color textured ribbon. So this is in copper clay. Now you can see it's not as wide as the in color ribbon. I have in fact cut it in half lengthwise and you do get a little bit of fraying, but I actually kind of like that look um, because there's lots of distressing on this card in other areas as well. So I'm just going to take and tie a little bow. This is about an eight inch piece. Um, so I'm just going to tie my bow here. It doesn't need to be super perfect. Okay, and then that is going to tuck under that bottom corner there. So I'm just going to take a glue dot, press my bow. Whoops, I pulled my loop there a little bit. Let's see if we can fix that bow up a bit. There we go. And then we're just going to tuck that underneath the bottom corner of our tag. Just like that, we've got our little distress loops there. And then the last touch are some of the copper snowflakes. These are the online exclusive um, adhesive backed snowflake embellishments. And they come in three sizes and I, I like to use all three sizes, I like the variation. So we're just going to go ahead and add one of each size. I like adding one right to the corner of the tag there. And then another one to the corner of our scene here. And then a little guy up just like that and there we go all right now let me just quick show you the inside here um, on the inside of my sample I stamped another sentiment from the stamp set and then I did the smaller so there's actually two uh, sort of scenic stamps so this is the large one that we used on the front this little guy works really nicely behind that May the Season of, of Sparkle sentiment just to add a little bit of interest behind the sentiment there Okay, so there's a couple of ideas for using a couple of stamps that you may not be too sure what to do with um, in this set, but I, I think they make really lovely focal points. Okay, so there we go. That's number one. You like this one? Oh, thank you, Cindy. I'm glad you like it. Oh, Arlene, you forget about your 
your copper embossing powder. Yeah, it's one we don't tend to reach for very often, but it certainly looks beautiful with the pretty peacock ink. All right, next card is this one. This is one I posted yesterday. This was actually one of the projects in my October card buffet. Um, let me set these two aside so I don't get them covered in ink. Um, and it's actually fairly easy, but it's a bit of a wow because it showcases not only the gorgeous um, DSP, but also some of the specialty paper. Now, sadly, this specialty paper is one of the items that is already sold out. Um, I wish I could say it were coming back because I love it and I have a lot of it and I wish I had used it more before it went away, but oh well. Um, so I'm gonna show you how to put this one together. This is a great layout for using up scraps of DSP. Okay, so if you have odds and ends of scraps of different widths, um, start laying them out and figuring out how you can make them work on a card. Okay, so let me show you what I did here. So I am going to start with my card base. I don't often start with the card base, but we are going to take our five and a half by eight and a half piece of pretty peacock cardstock. It's scored in the middle at four and a quarter. So we're going to start by folding that in half. Okay. Then in my little bag of goodies here, I have a piece of, I called it the berry pattern. As I said, I think it's rose hips. Um, the nice thing about this paper is it's not really directional. It kind of works whichever way, which is great. Um, and this piece is two and one quarter by five and a quarter. So that piece is going to go on there. So we're going to glue it with an equal border of top, bottom, and right side. We're not going to worry about this because we're going to fill that in a little bit, but we're going to start by gluing that piece on. So we'll add a little liquid glue. Pop that on. I'm just going to turn this so I can make sure my borders are nice and equal on the top and the two sides there. Okay. All right. Now we have this strip here, which is actually the reverse side of this piece. So remember how I said this is a great way to use up odds and ends of, of DSP scraps. So this is just an extra little script, a scrap. Um, that I had of the same DSP, it's one by five and a quarter. So it's going to go on over here. Now, you'll notice on my sample that I have a little bit more texture here. So before we glue that down, I'm going to take my, I call this a juniper branch because I think it looks like a uh, like a, an evergreen juniper with juniper berries. It, it well could be something else, but that's what I refer to it as. And I'm going to take my pretty peacock ink and I'm going to ink up the stamp and then I'm going to stamp off and then stamp on my strip and ink and stamp on my strip and you'll notice i'm kind of rotating my stamp as i go i'm not getting the same part of the pattern each time um, you want it to look a little bit random there we go just a nice subtle little bit of texture and this is going to show up more or less depending on which piece of that wash um, pattern you have because there's quite a bit of variation in, in shading there all right so that one is going to get glued here now i'm not going to glue that down quite yet because I want to make sure I get an equal border. So this is that little strip of that beautiful Snowflake Magic specialty paper that has sadly sold out, uh, but it is going to get glued right between those two, okay? So I'm gonna leave this sitting, I think, where I think it needs to go, and I'm going to glue this little guy on first. This piece is one half inch by five and a quarter. Again, all of the measurements are in the video description so you don't need to try and jot them down as you're watching you can just kind of watch what i'm doing and then check out the measurements later all right and now we're ready to glue that last little stamp strip on so another little bit of glue and we'll pop this guy on right there okay so that gives us our nice backdrop and again, you can vary the size of your strips. So if you have all sorts of uh, various scraps, they don't all have to be um, following the same measurements. Essentially, you want it the total to be about three and three quarters inches to allow for borders between the pieces. But you can mix and match your um, sizes to whatever you have that you're trying to use up. Okay. All right. Now we are going to work on our focal image. So we're going to start by stamping our sentiment. So I have my. Where is my, did I not mount my sentiment? Apparently I didn't. Silly me, I did not. There it is, still in the case. Let's grab a block and get that mounted up so we can use it. There we go. So we're gonna stamp this as well in Pretty Peacock. So I'm gonna grab this and we'll ink this up. 
And this label is from the Something Fancy label dies. Okay. And now I'm going to talk for a minute about how to get this beautiful two-tone look from um, a sort of mat, have our, our rose hips or berries match um, the DSP. So I'm going to set this aside for a minute and bring in my stamp. Uh, and I need my Moody Move and my pretty peacock and my pretty peacock dauber. So we're going to start by adding a little bit of pretty peacock sort of to the to the leaves and stems on this image. So let's just set this out of the way for a minute. And I'm not going to try to be super precise. So I'm just kind of pouncing onto the stamp. I'm not like trying to make sure I get it super exactly because remember this is supposed to be a watercolor look and if you've ever watercolored the colors sort of blend and run and that's sort of the, the point okay so then I'm going to come in with my moody mauve and I'm going to just do the same thing but this time on the berries or the rose hips all right and I have a little bit of scrap here and we're going to stamp that and you'll see look at that beautiful image isn't that pretty we get that soft uh, variation in color. Okay, so we're gonna do that same technique on our label. So again, I'm gonna start, I like to put both of them on. <laughs> Don't do this if you get your colors mixed up. Okay, if you're worried about that, just do one color at a time. Uh, but I'm gonna ink with my pretty peacock. I'm gonna, again, add a little ink to my leaves, and then come in and do my berries here. And I'm going to stamp just sort of in that bottom corner. And I get that beautiful soft look okay so that's that's how i stamped my um rose hips or berries now i also did the same kind of technique with the sort of greenery this little branch uh but i just did it using the pretty peacock so once again i'm going to ink my branch here really quickly and lightly i'm not taking a whole lot of ink you don't want a ton and again we're going to stamp it and you'll see how soft and pretty that is. Okay, you get that beautiful shading uh, just from the stamp itself. You don't need to do two-tone inking on that. You just get the shading because of the way the stamp is designed. All right, now I have already actually gone ahead and, and stamped and die cut those ahead of time. So you can see here they are once they're die cut. Let's get them out of here. Get that out of the way. Um, so we have, there's our berries or rose hips and there is our beautiful foliage okay and then I have a couple more of the sprigs so there's that same sort of um, pine branch and then I love this pretty it looks so dainty um, I don't know what this is supposed to be mistletoe maybe but it's just so so pretty and I've actually die cut it from some of the um, fine shimmer no subtle shimmer soft shimmer specialty paper from the annual catalog this is in pretty peacock and I also actually have a label that's a size larger than the one we stamped on that is going to sort of frame our sentiment like that. But isn't that pretty shimmery paper? I just think it works so well. Uh, Susan, how many blocks? I do have a lot of blocks. So you know what I tend to do? <laughs> when I have leftover Stampin' Rewards, I tend to throw on an extra block. Anytime I have, you know, like four or five or six dollars left over for Stampin' Rewards, I'll just add another block because you can never have too many blocks, right? Um, so that's what I do. And that's how I sort of build up my stash of blocks. All right, so we are going to go ahead and add our little sort of rose hips or berries to the back of our stamped label. So I'm going to add a little bit of seal here. And we're going to tuck that in behind. Now I want to make sure I see all the berries. So I'm, it's going to go up fairly high. All right. And then that is going to get adhered to our sparkly label here, but we're going to pop it up. So let me grab a fresh sheet. Of, well, not quite fresh, but newer sheet of dimensionals here. And we're going to add... Two dimensionals to the back of this. I'm actually going to put one sort of here as well because it's going to overlap our label. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and center that on our label. Get rid of all our backings here. And we're going to center the stamped label on that beautiful shimmery label there. Okay, now that's pretty it as it is. However, we've got more foliage, so we may as well use it. So we have our greenery, we have our little sprig, and what I actually did with this is I, I cut it up even more. But to start, we're going to add the silver sort of pine branch in behind. So again, I'm going to add a little bit of seal. Um, now I do tend to build my um, arrangements on the label. Like I like to sort of have it and then sort of build from the front back when I am designing my um, sort of arrangements of greenery. 
Um, so people find that strange. That's just kind of how I think. I kind of think front to back when I'm designing. So there is our pine branch. And then we're going to go ahead and add our, our second bit of stamped greenery. So again, I'm going to add another little bit of seal to the back. And we're going to add that sort of peeking out there. And then I'm going to take my little, I don't know, for lack of a better word, mistletoe sprig. And I'm going to trim this because I want to kind of see it. And if I just put it all in one spot, it's not going to show very well. So I'm going to add this sort of tallest piece in behind. So it's going to kind of be the top, the highest point on my little arrangement here. And then this little guy, if I could pick it up, because my fingers don't seem to want to work today. They're very cold. <laughs> it is a little bit chilly in my studio right now. We're going to have this little guy sort of peeking out from the left there. You see that? All right, so then the last touch behind our arrangement is to add some of this gorgeous iridescent white ribbon. Now this again is um, not part of the suite, but it works beautifully well with the suite. And I love that it's got sort of a little bit of a pinky hue, which kind of picks up some of the moody mauve. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and add some more seal. Yes, more seal to the back of our label. And we are going to create a Z. Okay, so this is about what, 10 inches, 11 inches of ribbon. And so I'm going to start at a bit of an angle. I'm going to come out past my label, back across, and come across this way. And I apologize for saying Z to all my American friends. I know that is not how we pronounce it in America. But I am Canadian, and that is how I learned to say it. So I have a really hard time thinking or remembering to say anything else. So there you go. Unap un unapologetically Canadian. So there we go. There is our little Z looks. So we're going to trim the end of this just so that it's not quite so long isn't that a pretty little arrangement and then that is going to get popped up on the front of our card now if you're worried about thickness for mailing you certainly can glue this flat i just like with all of all that i've got going on in there i like to have that extra um, bit of dimension so we're going to get rid of our backings once again and pop that on. And now we just want to be aware, right? We want to make sure that that isn't extending too far off the edge. So I'm going to move it over just enough so that that is going to be able to fit in my envelope. But isn't that pretty? Love it. All right. And then our last touch is some of those fabulous gems. As soon as I find my take your pick. There we go. Nice little frosted touch to finish our card. So these are some of the sort of bluey gray. Any one of them actually works with this paper. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, which ones I use. And there we go. Here is our finished project. Isn't that pretty? And not hard to build. Um, here is what is on the inside. So I just stamped some more of the greenery using that same technique that we did on the front. I left it blank because made the season of sparkle bring joy and delight could be anything, right? Any uh, wintry card. So there we go. Oh, Cindy likes this one. Thank you, Cindy. I'm glad you like it. All right. We are rolling along. One more to show you tonight. So let me get this out of the way and we'll bring in our last card. So this is one, I think I posted it today. I don't know. It's all a blur. Today has been a really long day. <laughs> I can't remember if it was today or yesterday. Uh, but here is one that really features and showcases the beautiful designer series paper. And I wanted to show you the um, what that little die does. So I'm going to bring back the die. This little guy here, it cuts this sort of snowflake, snowflake pattern into your paper. So can you see that subtle texture there from the snowflakes? So I'll show it to you on the DFP that's just cut ready to go on the card. But can you see that beautiful little bit of texture? Isn't that great? I love that look. All right, so we're going to put this one together. Uh, this is, a, again, I... <laughs> This is, seems to be the, my most used pattern in this pack. Um, so it is four by five and a quarter inches. And um, I have run it through with the die three times to kind of, and I rotate the die so I don't get a super regular, you want it to look a little bit random. Um, so that gives me that little bit of texture along that left-hand side. Now, I had originally thought I would glue this right onto the Lost Lagoon card base, but then you lose that sort of peek through effect. You don't see the, the sort of highlight of that um, die cut. So we are going to layer it on a piece of just plain old white cardstock. It is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So that's going to frame our DSP and also make those snowflakes a little bit more visible. Now, caution, don't use liquid glue. <laughs> When you are gluing this because uh, it's going to ooze through your little cuts there of your snowflakes and you're going to have a rather sticky card. 
uh, that will be hard to put down, shall we say. So we are gonna add a little seal here. And we're going to layer that. And here I go with white on white. I have such a hard time seeing white against white. There we go. And then we're going to add a little bit of our ribbon. So I've already got a pretty bow tie. So maybe we'll trim that bow off. We'll save that to use on this card. And we're going to add a little bit of ribbon to the front of the card. Now, I don't want to cover up uh, those snowflakes. So I'm putting it a little bit to the right of the snowflake um, die cut, which is about maybe an inch and a quarter uh, from the edge, from the left edge, I should say. And so I'm going to grab a glue dot here. Lay my ribbon kind of where I want it to go and then just wrap the end around and press it. Now I do find that this ribbon is so sheer, sometimes it doesn't want to stick to the glue dot. So sometimes it's helpful to put a little bit of tape there. Um, you could just use your regular scotch tape or a bit of tear and tape. I don't have any handy, but that's just a little tip um, because this ribbon is so sheer. So I'm going to trim this off. We're going to do the same thing on this side. So again, I'll grab another glue dot. Maybe I'll do two. That might increase the likelihood of it sticking. Just because there's not a whole lot of fabric for the adhesive to stick to there. Okay. And then that is going to get adhered to a Lost Lagoon card base. Whoopsie. Throwing away die, throwing around die cuts here. Uh, this is five and a half by eight and a half. So same measurements as our last card, but this time in a uh, landscape orientation. So again, we're going to fold in half along our score line. And then this is going to get adhered to the front of our card. And what I sometimes like to do is just run my seal right over the ribbon just to increase the likelihood that that's going to stay put. Because as I said, it's so sheer, sometimes it doesn't want to stick. I'm going to grab a tissue because I don't want to sniffle at you. There we go. Sorry, I had to do one. <laughs> Sniffling is my pet peeve. I'm a teacher and listening to, to kids sniffle all day drives me crazy, which is why I go through a lot of Kleenex in my classroom. <laughs> all right, so I have a piece of silver foil cardstock. Um, so this is two and three quarters by four and one eighth, yes. And then this is a deckled rectangle cut using the deckled rectangle die. So if you love the deckled circles, um, you may have missed the deckled rectangles. They are in the annual catalog. Um, and they cut that lovely sort of deckled edge as well. So this one measures, uh, four by two and a half ish. Um, so it's that size. We're just going to go ahead and layer those two pieces. And I know some of you will be going, oh, she's covering up that beautiful foil. So do some die cuts out of the middle before you cover it up, if that bothers you. Um, and typically I would, but I'm in a bit, was in a bit of a rush when I was prepping this. So I didn't worry about the fact I was covering that little bit of silver foil there. Okay, and then that is going to get glued to the front of our card centered. All right, so again, a little bit of seal. And we're going to pop that on, centered on the front of our card, and hopefully relatively straight. Okay, now we get to work our magic with some more die cuts and our tags. We're going to do a little bit more arranging. One of my favorite things about Christmas is arranging, right? Arranging the Christmas tree, arranging my greenery, my mantle, uh, doing my urns out front. So I just love doing all of that. So um, I do come by the, the floral arrangement uh, passion, honestly. So I have here my sentiment. Again, I've used the same sentiment and that same label die from the Autumn Leaves dies. I just love the way they work together. Um, this time I've heat embossed the sentiment in white. Okay, okay. Susan says is for sure. Rose hips. Thank you. Thank you for clarifying that for us. Um, so here is one. This I love this little die as well. I think these are teasels. These little shapes here. I think that's what they are. That's what we used to call them when I was a kid. I'm not sure. I'm not a, a botanist, so uh, forgive me if I'm naming things incorrectly. Um, and what I like about this is it has this one little guy kind of all down by itself, which makes it really easy to kind of nestle the tag in amongst the, the foliage there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little smidge of adhesive to the back of my tag. And I'm just gonna arrange that so it's at a bit of an angle and it's gonna adhere. And then I'm gonna take and tuck a little glue dot or maybe just a smidge of liquid glue in behind this little guy here just to secure it on the front. So I'll stick that guy down. And then we have 
our little arrangement of foliage there. And then we have, there is, so we stamped the juniper berries before. This is the, the coordinating die cut. It is not the same, it does not, you can't cut out the stamped image with this die. Uh, there is a separate die that cuts out the stamped image. I should mention that. Uh, but again, this is a rather large die cut and I felt like it was kind of overwhelming on the front of my card. So it lends itself really well to being trimmed up too. So again, I like to think about what would I do with a really big, uh, Pine branch, if I were arranging my urns, well, I would cut it down so that I could use smaller pieces. So I have now three little bits here that I can use on the front of my card and have it be a little bit more to scale. So I'm just gonna clean up these bits that I've trimmed. This little guy is actually gonna kind of extend out the bottom. So we're gonna add a bit more seal to the back here. And that's just gonna kind of hang out the bottom like that. This larger piece is gonna kind of come up this way. So we'll add a little bit more here, like that. And then I use just a little smidge on the front of the card. I'm actually just gonna trim off this little branch with the berries. And it's just gonna kind of hang out on the front. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna tuck that in behind too. I think I want the focal point to be on my little teasels there. So we're gonna change it up a little bit. There we go. And then finally, there's actually a little holly leaf die in this set as well. So I've cut two of them from the same DSP, again, using up my scraps. Um, and they're going to peek out from behind here as well. So we'll just add a little bit more seal. There's one leaf. And two leaves. And there we go. There is our little arrangement that we are going to add to the front of our card. So we'll add a couple of dimensionals here. And get rid of our backings. And then that, so what I did is I lined up sort of my little arrangement of foliage with the ribbon here, okay? So it's gonna kind of get centered um, with the ribbon, just like that. And then we're gonna take our little bow and it's gonna tuck in here just below our tag. So again, we'll add a glue dot to our bow and tuck that in right there. And then the last touch on this one, I use some of these um, sparkly, um, what are they, sequins? They are glitter sequins, I can't remember the name of them. They're also in the mini catalog, uh, but these white ones are the perfect frosty touch. You certainly could use the blue as well. Um, what I find with our embellishments, especially the sparkly ones, is you can really mix and match um, colors because all the shimmer and glitter kind of has a whole bunch of different shades in it. So it's easy to mix and match and they don't have to be a precise match to your um, color palette. All right. So on the inside of this, I did another little strip with the snowflakes just because I really like that little bit of texture that it added and then stamped another sentiment. So there we go. There is that one finished. All right, three quick cards today. Let me show you all three again, and then I'm gonna show you a couple more ideas with this beautiful suite. So there we go. Um, let me show you a few more things. So here, this is the very first card I made as soon as I opened up this suite. Um, I love this one because it's sort of like black and white with a, a little pot. So it's almost like a spotlight technique uh, where we've got some color and against the black and white background. So I've stamped on the DSP on this one. Um, and then this is actually DSP as well. So it's all DSP that I have stamped and, uh, and then um, adhere to my card. And then there's the inside, nice subtle look. Here is a pretty one as well. Again, stamping on that smoky slate um, DSP using some of the die cut um, foliage and greenery there. Sentiment is from the Christmas classic stamp set. And then I also wanted to show that these are this this suite can be used for more than just um, Christmas or winter. So here is a really simple. This could be a congratulations card. It could be a birthday card. Um, so using that, this is the rip and flip technique where I've actually cut a four by six inch piece of DSP and then ripped it and overlapped it, added a little greenery, and an any occasion sentiment. Okay, and then this one, I thought the stag made a beautiful sympathy card. So I needed some sympathy cards um, earlier in the fall and I thought this made a really lovely one. So super simple, it's all about the DSP, um, a little bit of the, the die cut um, pine branch 
and a sympathy sentiment. And then on the inside, there's my forest image and a, a nice sentiment. And then here are a couple of fun folds. So this is one that um, one of my downline, Barb Pepper, uh, designed and presented at our team event back in September. Love this. This is a faux center step card. And then here you may have seen a few weeks ago, I demonstrated the pop out gatefold card. Um, so here is my version using this suite. So it opens up, stands up on your mantle. You've got a lovely little pop out focal point there. And again, folds flat for mailing. And then on the back, there are, is a space for writing your greeting. All right. So if you missed that, go back. Um, I think it's from a couple of weeks ago. It's the pop out gatefold card. All right, so there you go. There are some ideas for this beautiful suite. Let me switch to you. looking at me. Sorry, I know the cards are nice, look nicer than I do. <laughs> I totally get it. Uh, but I do like to say goodbye. And thank you so much for joining me this week. I hope you enjoyed these projects. And um, I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday Live at 5. Bye for now.